Hi, this is a quick video to talk about Microsplat Tessellation and Parallax module. Once the module is purchased and installed, uh, it will add several features to the shader compiler. Uh, the first of uh, the two are Tessellation, and the second one is Parallax, and that's Parallax Offset Mapping. Um, if you're not familiar with the, the term, it's basically a texture-based effect uh, versus Tessellation, which actually subdivides triangles on the GPU and uh, displaces them. So let's turn on tessellation and it will recompile the shader and now we see we have this nicely tessellated terrain which has been subdivided and displaced by the GPU and you can see there's actual geometry there. So uh, let's talk about uh, tessellation performance and settings. So when you turn on tessellation uh, the main controls will come up here in the tessellation section uh, the first one is the displacement amount. This controls how much uh, you displace a given surface. Uh, the next one you should really think about is the tessellation amount. This controls uh, how subdivided the triangles are. Uh, I use a distance-based tessellation here. Uh, basically what this means is that at the min distance uh, we will be uh, the maximum amount of tessellation and at the max distance we will be the minimum amount of tessellation. So tessellation will basically fade over these distances. So if you pull these distances in, you'll see some better performance. Or if you reduce the amount of tessellation, you will see better performance. Um, but obviously if you get too low, you start seeing you know terrain that does not tessellate well. So you need a, a reasonable amount of tessellation uh, to get a, a good amount of quality. Now these other three settings are actually um, pretty important. MIP bias controls uh, which MIP map it uses to do the displacement. Uh, if I put this all the way up, it will use the highest res uh, texture. So uh, if I put this all the way down, it will use the lowest res uh, texture. It only lets you go down so far, um, but you can see how the, the sort of detail level gets smoothed out. Uh, and that's actually quite desirable in a lot of cases. In most cases, I find that using a mint level around 3 or 4 uh, really helps the overall look of the tessellation. It prevents really sharp and jagged. Uh, tessellation from happening because it's using a lower res texture which is effectively blurrier and it also helps performance because you're using a lower res texture and therefore less data is going through the GPU cache. Shaping is essentially the same thing as the main interpolation contrast uh, but for the tessellation stage. So if you turn shaping up what it's going to actually do is it's going when it blends between different textures as we see over here it's going to uh, use a much harder blend, uh, just like color map would if we turn it up. So if we turn this all the way up, uh, what happens is it, it quickly switches between, say, the grass and the stones that are blending here, and you get these, these kind of nasty, sharp edges. Um, so I like this turned down quite a bit. I like to use a nice, wide, smooth blend uh, for the interpolation on the displacement. And I find that that really helps the quality of the displacement and prevents sort of nasty um, artifacts that you get from uh, terrain switching between different heights too quickly. Um, and the final control on here is uh, something I call up bias. And so what happens is is that sometimes uh, when you tessellate on a slope like this, uh, what the tessellator does by default is tessellate along the direction of the normal. So along the slope. And that can look really great uh, for certain types of surfaces. But some surfaces uh, actually look better when they're tessellated, when they always go straight up. And so if you uh, put the up bias up, uh, what it's going to do is tessellate straight up rather than in the direction of the normal. And so you can see it's shifting the uh, tessellation from one side to the other here. Um, so normally uh, this is available globally. Uh, what I'll often do is sort of, you know, have a little bit of up bias in there um, just to kind of favor an upwards direction on the tessellation. Um, but once you enable the um, tessellation feature, you will get uh, per texture controls uh, for all of these. And so you can select your texture up here, and then you can turn on the per texture control. Uh, this will apply to all of the, the textures uh, once you turn it on. And then you can control each of these parameters uh, per texture. So for instance, if we turn on the displacement amount per texture, it will recompile the shader. And then we can actually select this texture and we can increase or decrease the uh, 
displacement amount on just that texture. So if we go to somewhere where we have these textures blended together, um, got a nice spot here. Here we can see that when I adjust the slider, it is affecting just those little bumpy bits that are blended in and not affecting the other texture. Um, and so that is also available for up bias. So you can up bias a specific texture. And then finally, the last control is the offset. And so the offset uh, controls whether the texture uh, is pushed up or down, essentially. And it also um, has the effect of controlling the middle point of the texture. Um, so if we turn the offset on, we'll see our default offset is zero. Uh, and what we can actually do is for a given texture, we can say, oh, I would like to move the offset up, and then that's going to push that uh, texture higher or move it down, it's going to push that texture lower. Now offset and up bias are blended between the textures um, because otherwise you'd have sharp sort of jagged uh, lines between them. So they will affect a general, the general region in which that texture exists as opposed to affecting the individual uh, vertices where that texture exists. But what this can really help you do uh, is decide if you have a particular texture that um, you know has a a really wide displacement, if you were to set this at negative 0.5, uh, then basically what would happen is, is that the black parts of the texture would push down and the white parts would put a push up. And so you can adjust this on an individual basis and sort of that can help you keep an average displacement so that you never displace too far from the original surface because that can pro uh, cause problems elsewhere, uh, mainly with like physics and things. So that's the features of tessellation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the per texture property. Um, now let's talk about parallax mapping. So parallax mapping can be used with tessellation or without tessellation. Um, it's actually a really nice little enhancement to uh, tessellation. If you turn parallax mapping on, uh, it does add some extra cost, um, but, uh, but it increases that overall depth effect quite a bit. So if I change the parallax height, which is the one control for parallax, you can see that it looks like these are actually displacing more than they actually are. Um, so sometimes a good performance trade-off can be to lower your overall tessellation factor and blend a little more parallax instead. So the cost of parallax is basically resampling the height maps. Um, and they're stored in the Avido channel, so you're going to pay those that cost of sampling them again. Uh, but it's not that bad. It only does it once, unlike something like parallax occlusion mapping, which does it 30 or 40 times. Um, and then, of course, parallax can be used without tessellation. So turn off tessellation. And what you'll see is that it actually does add quite a bit of depth here. So if I turn this all the way down, you can see that's no parallax. And as I turn the parallax up, it really creates a nice sense of depth. If you turn the parallax up too high, uh, as you'll see right here, you can see some smearing of the, the UV coordinates. That's because it's um, pretending that this thing is uh, has depth when it really doesn't. Um, and so it can smear out the UVs like that. So much like everything else, uh, you can go down here and you can adjust the parallax height per texture. Um, so if you uh, find that one texture in particular is giving you a lot of trouble, you can go tweak that one texture, and then you can still use this control to sort of set your overall parallax amount. So that's basically tessellation and parallax. There's one other thing I want to show, um, which is once this is turned on here, uh, we have our general uh, parallax and tessellation going, uh, which looks fantastic. And uh, we're currently doing our tessellation out to about 60 meters. Yeah, about 60 meters there. If we look on our terrain, you will notice that our base map distance here, which is right here, base map distance, is set to 60 meters. And that is because what Microsplat does is it figures out, uh, you know, there's a collection of effects that we need close up to the camera. At what point are those uh, off? Okay, great. Let's switch to another shader at that point so that we don't pay the cost for tessellation. And you might think that the cost of tessellation is about the increased vertex count. 
Um, that's part of the cost, uh, but the real cost of tessellation is essentially invoking the tessellator stages. So a normal shader bypasses these stages and it doesn't have to do a lot of work. So it's actually very expensive to run with tessellation even if you're not increasing the vertex count. Uh, so this allows us to turn that effect off at a very short distance, which is great. And additionally, uh, the other big performance thing that happens with um, tessellation is what's called micro-triangle issues. So you may be able to handle the vertex count just fine, uh, but what happens is, is that when you have really, really tiny triangles on a GPU, uh, the pixel shader can become the bottleneck, and that's because of the way the, the GPU works. Uh, it shades in blocks of pixels, and if you um, have an edge cutting through one of those pixels because you have really, really tiny triangles, or maybe your triangle is only one pixel big, uh, then it does a bunch of work that it, can, it has to throw out. So, but for the most part, you can just dial your settings to where you think they need to be, uh, and everything will run very, very fast uh, because of the level of detail um, going on. And you can see that uh, tessellation is quite fast on my little laptop here. So, I uh, hope this has been useful. Thank you for watching.